Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to Rain Check. We got back from the hospital. This one, this one's a happier time, right? Javier with was with us. We're in good, good time with Ro. Very good time with Ro. Very excited. Uh, but we're we're gonna do some investigation, maybe with uh, Javier with us this time. We'll actually do something about Christopher, find something out. Because what, like, Theodore and Monty just kind of didn't get a lot done during this trip, did they? But, you know, they tried their best, right? But we have Javier. We have Javier this time. So things will definitely be different. Damn, it's back. I'm back where it all started. Feels like forever since I was here last, even though it's only been a few days. Fitting that it's raining again, too. Every, even though I swear there weren't any clouds a moment ago. Theodore, do you need me to go over the plan with you again? I only ask because you seem rather quiet during the car ride. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt to go over it again. The fox takes out the bit flipper and starts calibrating it. We will search for Christopher. The hard part isn't tracking him down. It's getting any useful information out of him. Now that now there is a chance that he may or may not be working today. So, given the circumstances, we can adjust the plan accordingly. Right, and that's why you said we should try and lure him out. Just me. From my understanding, he'll know what you look like. But how do we even know he's here? We don't, but the establishment should have a record of where they live if that comes to that. Right. I just need you to do what I say, and this should go smoothly. I nod slowly, trying my best to be nonchalant about the plan. Here, take this. He hesitantly passes the bit flipper to me before sizing me up. Just like the power plant, I'll, I'll be depending on you with this. But this time, you're going to be jamming instead of scanning. He searches his pocket again, but fails to find anything. Uh, I forgot to take back those earpieces I gave you the other night. Oh. I take out the earpieces from my pocket, showing Javier as I blow off some dust. Uh, you mean this? You still have it? Good, good. I was worried you wouldn't be able to communicate. We wouldn't be able to communicate inside. We're splitting up? No. This will make the plan easier to execute from afar. I follow Javier's lead and adjust the earpiece in the adjust the earpiece in, double checking that it still works. You mentioned earlier that you had spotted him around the hotel before, meaning he doesn't work any particular spot. Peculiar spot. Particular It's fine. Yeah, he was at the casino when I was attacked, and then at the gardens when David was looking for staff. Interesting. That gives me the perfect idea. What is it? I'll tell you more when we're inside. Now, please, lead the way. Oh, still a nice looking casino, I must say. Here we are, the casino. Looks like it did the other day, except... Oh? Huh? Yes? Where is everyone? It's a lot emptier than it was a few days ago. Oh, okay, same business, same business. Despite the place still having a few people, excuse me, uh, sprinkled here and there, it's nothing compared to what it was the other day. It could be related to that uh, attack you were involved in. Nevertheless, less people should be around should make it easier to set up what we're about to do. The fox points at a row of slot machines off in the distance. I give a confused look, and not sure what Javier's what Javier's planning. Christopher is a security guard, yes? Yeah. Then someone will show up if things go get out of hand. Hopefully it's him. With one uh with no one checking our IDs at the entrance, we walk deeper in until we reach the slot machines. I recommend you sit a rose away from me, in case the bear manages to spot you. Okay, I'll sit over there. One last thing. I need you to aim the bit flipper at the machine and press the red button when I say so. 
But I need you to do it, discreetly. Sure, but what exactly is that going to do? What are we planning? You'll see. He gives me a sly smirk before returning his attention to the machine. Scratching my head, I walk over and sit down by my own machine, carefully following the instructions and pressing the red button as I aim the bit flipper. Javier sits down in front of a row in front of a slot machine and starts fiddling with the levers for several minutes, periodically looking around. I guess he's just waiting for the perfect moment. Hey, what are you doing? Javier doesn't answer and continues to pull the levers, the lever half-heartedly on the machine until a group of people sit nearby him. Now! I look down at the bit flipper and press the red button with nothing notable happening, but that's when Javier jumps from his seat. I won! I did it! I s it suddenly becomes clear what Javier's plan is, causing me, uh, causing me look behind me, causing me to look behind me, making sure no one saw what I did, and acting as casual as, as possible. Jackpot! I won! Everyone, look! I've never heard this uh, level of enthusiasm in his voice before. It's a bit frightening. The annoying uh, victory jingle the slot play continues to ring, drawing in people around Javier and forming a small crowd. Keep an eye on security. More and more people start to gather around Javier as moments pass by, cheering and congratulating him. He's particularly drawing in what uh, little people are here in one spot. I get up and look around, and that's when I spot the familiar polar bear quickly walking his way over. Oh, he's here! He's coming over from your left! When I give you the signal, I need you to press the blue button on, the ma on my machine. Okay. It's almost impossible to get a good view from where I'm seated with the crowd that's now swarming Javier. I need to get closer without being spotted. I can't believe I won! This is incredible! I seriously cannot wait to cash my winnings and buy all the things I've always wanted. Another 300 airplane models. I'm dying from secondhand embarrassment. Why is he talking like that? <laughs> he needs to work on his acting skills <laughs> because I can't, I don't believe him for a second. Javier's trying. <laughs> oh, what's going on here? Hello, good sir. It, ap it appears I've won the jackpot. All $4.7 million. Mine! Where can I go to get this cashed out? Huh. Now? I press the blue button, causing this mach his machine to suddenly blue screen and shut off. What? What happened here? What happened to the jackpot? Give me a moment. The polar bear speaks into his radio, and after a moment, he shakes his head disappointingly. There seems to be a mistake. This machine wasn't supposed to pay the ja pay out the jackpot. What do you mean? I don't know exactly how the machines work, but I'm just telling you what upper management just told me. I'm terribly sorry. Christopher waves the crowd of people away. He seems more annoyed of the crowd than Javier is. There's nothing to see here, people. The machine malfunctioned and wasn't supposed to give out a jackpot. Little by little, the, clouds, the crowd slowly disperses, and so it's just the two of them. How unfortunate. I was hoping to win big today. It happens from time to time. The staff can offer you compensation for this, though. I can take you to the front desk if you'd like, and we can have this all sorted out. I see. There's no need. I can go over there myself in just a second. Hmm. You seem to be taking this well. Usually people are more frustrated than you. Uh, when you are, when this happens. I can feel my palms getting clammy from the tension. Come on, Javier, be more believable. <laughs> well, it's out of my control. If I wasn't supposed to win, then I guess I wasn't. Thanks for the information. Christopher. Hey, wait! I know you! I wonder. Uh, no wonder I thought you looked familiar. What a small world running into you again. Have we met? Yes, we have. At the speakeasy a few nights ago. 
Hmm. I don't remember seeing you before. It was a quick small talk. I wouldn't be surprised if you don't remember me. You were with your snow leopard friend, right? And you could say that. Where is he now, anyway? He's working. Christopher leans closer. Leans closer in before Javier can say another word. The polar bear starts to whisper something to Javier, and I'm only able to hear it through the earpiece. Who sent you? A person dressed like you wouldn't need work. What? What do you mean? I don't need any work. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't buy it. Get out of my sight. <laughs> Look how angry he is. <laughs> Christopher walks off, leaving Javier standing there, unamused. Huh. All talk and no bite. Did you hear all that? Yeah. Did you think he might be onto you? He's suspecting something, although he thinks I'm looking for work. Definitely smarter than he looks. Javier manages to spot to uh, Javier manages to spot through the row and points me to the exit. Over there. He's work he's walking toward the elevators. We need to follow him. Oh. What are we doing? What's going on? We do our best to follow Christopher down the motel. Uh, we're where we were barely able to spot him exiting the side doors of the lobby. I find it extremely suspicious that he would immediately leave instead of kicking me out. Yeah, I wonder where he's going. There is only one way to find out. We'll continue to trail him on foot. On foot? But it's still raining outside. We don't have a choice. Plus, it would be too suspicious trailing him around in such a slow-moving car. I nod, bracing myself to be completely soaked. Good. Now, I believe he went that way. Follow my lead, and please do not slow me down. Is that him down the street? The polar bear with the large black umbrella? Yes, it appears so. Uh, let's keep a good distance away from him. I don't want us getting caught. The two of us carefully uh, slow the polar bear, uh, making sure to hide behind buildings while standing under... Uh, as many eaves, 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 as possible to, uh, to stay dry. Eaves. E hmm. Okay, I don't know what those are. I don't know how that word is pronounced. But we'll continue. This goes on for a couple of minutes until Christopher makes a turn and disappears into the ground. Did he just go down? The subway. Yes. Quick. We need to follow him. Despite my injury and Javier's stamina, we try to run over to the entrance as fast as possible. We do our best to catch up, but the wet steps slow us down significantly as we cautiously descend the long flight of stairs. Whoa! Look at this place! Look all these doggo and cat doll people! Oh, this place is huge! Pausing to take in the view, I'm quickly drawn back by Javier, who gestures toward my pocket as we stand before before the turn ta turn tail gate. Take out the bit flipper and hit the red button on the gate. Uh, isn't that... Just do it, we don't have time to waste. I do as I'm told and the gate suddenly swings open. Javier takes no time to squeeze past me through the gate, looking around frantically for Christopher. Suddenly, I spot the polar bear out of the corner of my eye, going down another flight of stairs off in the distance. He went that way! Are you sure? Oh, I'm sure. His vest is unmistakable. Ah, he, he's heading towards the green line, then. I start to follow, but uh, stop when I notice Javier hunched over and gripping, gripping onto his knees. Go! You have to follow him. I'll, I'll be right behind you. Oh, but I don't even know where... Just go, I'll be able to find you. I just need a second to catch my breath. I jog off as best I can, down the platform and the same stairs Christopher took. Relief watches over me as I spot a crowd on the platform, making it easier to stay hidden among those waiting for the east and westbound trains. 
to find Christopher in a crowd of people. It takes me uh takes me too long until I spot his bright white fur uh, sticking out amongst the rest of the people. Oh, thank God he's still here. As if on cue, a bright light illuminates at the end of the tunnel, and the front of the car is zooming car zooms past, uh, stops, and begins boarding in a matter of moments. Uh-oh. Where's Javier? The train's about to leave any second! Hesitantly, I enter the train, unsure of how Javier's supposed to track me down. The door shuts, and I try to find a place to watch Christopher, who's seated two cars down. Where are we even going? I start to shiver as my wet fur and... My wet clothes and fur mingle with the sharp, cold air as I reluctantly find a place to sit. Act natural. Without a phone, I do my best to look occupied, glancing at the advertisements on the walls, occasionally checking off, checking back at Christopher. That's when I spot a map of the subway s system. Eh, uh, okay. Javier said something about the green line. I'm guessing the red dot is where we actually are. Aren't there two green lines? Aren't these two? I guess one's more like teal, but like, you know. Uh, and if this is the eastbound line, there, there's only one stop until we reach the end of the line. Okay, so we won't be staying on for too much longer. Anxiously, I return to watching Christopher, making sure not to get caught by his persistent, watchful gaze. It's like he knows someone is waiting for him, watching him. The car is gradually thin out as people leave at each stop until we're headed for the terminal station. The panic uh, starts to set in as Christopher gets up from his seat and slowly makes his way over to me. I do my best to look away, trying to sink myself further into my seat to blend in as best I can. Crap, he's getting closer. He's definitely going to recognize me. And noticing that we're almost at the last stop, I get up and casually walk towards the door, uh, making sure to hide my face. Come on, please just open already. Oh, okay. The door slides open and I slip out as fast as I can, only looking back when I'm a comfortable distance away and out of sight. I spot the polar bear quickly walking down the platform and riding up the escalator. He's moving fast now. And does he know he's being followed? I do my best to keep up, eventually heading out of the station. Aside from a thin strip of buildings looking over the ocean, yeah, the ocean bridges, there's not much else around. When I glance back, I catch a glimpse of Christopher vanishing into a small building just up ahead. Ah, oh, great. The rain's picking up. I'm already soaked as it is. Uh, what's this? Is that coming from me? I reach into my pocket to take out the bit flipper that's now emitting a small beep. So this is how Javier is going to find where I am. Eh? Hello? The earpiece continues to buzz, but it's hard to make out of anything with all the static. Theodore! Javier, is that you? What? Were you able to follow Christopher? Yeah, he just went inside some kind of office building. Ah, oh, the reception and the tunnel, but I'll be there soon. Give me five minutes. Okay. A well, moments pass until I'm finally able to make my way closer, finding a spot to take shelter from the rain as a bus pass a bus stop just a few buildings from the office. Man, where's Javier? Hmm, maybe I should get closer to the building and take a look inside while I wait for Javier. Nah, it's best if I wait for backup. The last thing I want to do is get myself into more trouble. I see you. I'm right behind you. I turn around and spot the fox completely soaked, <laughs> completely spent, sorry, completely spent as he walks down the road to me. Javier, are you okay? You look like you were going to pass out earlier. Eh, I'm drenched, but besides that, I'm fine. More importantly, which building did Christopher go into? Javier raises a brow that I, before I point to the inconspicuous white office building a few buildings in front of us. I see. I can handle things from here. The bit flipper, please. I pass back his gadget, which he wastes no time recalibrating. It's a shame. I didn't bring anything that could enhance audio, so we're just going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. Well, what's the old-fashioned way? They should have some surveillance, uh, s internal surveillance system, in which I can promptly gain access and transmit the feed to my backup phone. 
So you're you're hacking the cameras? I prefer my description. <laughs> he wants to feel smart. <laughs> Theo, come on. <laughs> He walks over to the side of the building, checking to see if there is any security cameras that could detect us before continuing to fidget with his device. Ugh. We just need to get a bit closer to the window and... There, I've managed to detect a network. That's all, all that's left to do. Is that the tiger from before? Hey, this is private property. Get the hell out of... It is the tiger. <laughs> uh, we both turn around and see the same tiger from earlier blocking our way. Don't I know you two? Oh. I freeze and glance nervously over to Javier, who looks equally as surprised to see the tiger. Yeah, I think I do. You're that disrespectful fox from earlier. And yous, you're the annoying tiger. He notices the stuff in Javier's paw, causing his face to immediately go dark. What the fuck are you... fuck is that? You's trying to spy on us! N no it's nothing, we're, we're not spies! <laughs> Gone. <laughs> oh... Yo, is anyone... Is anyone watching a fan of uh, Common Rider Drive? Anyone remember like when, whenever like Machine Chaser transforms or uh, like activates his super weapon, like his little like gun device when he presses it just goes gun. <laughs> oh, next year's the 10 year anniversary of Drive, everyone. That feels weird. I blink, and suddenly there's a gun being pointed at us. What the hell is going on? Wait, 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 wait. This is a huge misunderstanding. We, we can explain. Explain, then. I'd love to hear who you're working for. Actually, why don't we move this discussion inside? Boys. Two tall lions uh, suddenly appear behind us, blocking our escape with their crowbars and... Bin paw. Oh my god. Oh my god. They're gonna they're gonna beat us down with crowbars. We're gonna be the next Jason Todd, everyone. Take these spies inside. Spies? Where have I heard that term uh being used before? The snow leopard. Yeah, no funny business, or I'll shoot. The men approach us and grab onto our shoulders. Ow! Oh, don't touch me. I'll go. Don't just don't don't touch me. Quiet. There's a small grip that holds my arm behind my back, and we're hastily escorted inside the building through the back. Well, okay. The men the men bring us inside a small dark office where we're subsequently patted down. I don't like the vibe in here. Hey, give me that. Uh, give that back. One of the men removes several of of items from Javier's jacket and tosses it aside. Eh, you better not have broken any of them. They're expensive to fix. Have a seat. The lions finally release us and force us to sit down on some old rickety chairs where our arms are subsequently binded to, to the back. Oh, okay. Glancing over to Javier, I'm surprised he's more annoyed than scared. Don't tell me he's more worried about his stuff than our lives. <laughs> uh, I mean, Javier's lived a life. This is probably hap This probably happens to Javier like every week. Theo, he's used to it. It's like, <laughs> I hope we can uh, talk our way out of this. Now, you say you're not spies. Which organization do you belong with? Then. Oh, what are you doing with that detector in your paw in your paws? Don't think I don't know what you're doing. We're part of ARC. We're doing an investigation on the harbor fire, and we thought there might be a lead here. And what the hell is wrong with you people pointing a gun at us? 
The men look uh, <laughs> look like they're about to strangle Javier, but the tiger motions them to halt. Interesting. Ark, huh? Do you know where you are? The two of us sit in silence as the tiger dis dismisses his lion bodyguards, while keeping his gaze fixed on us the entire time. Oh, you know what? I'll make a deal with you twos. Work for me, and I promise I won't break your kneecaps. Do we need those? I mean... Walking is fun. But it could be a little overrated. Otherwise... What the hell is going on? Javier, we don't have much of a choice. We're being held captive. No. What? I have a better offer. No. Oh, I was not aware you were calling the shots here. But go on. Humor me. The polar bear, Christopher. What's his affiliation to this place? If you tell us and let Theodore go, I'll work for you. And personally give you all of the data Ark has collected over the years that might interest Blackout. What? What is he talking about? I thought Ark didn't know much about Blackout to begin with. Is he bluffing? Ah, Christopher, huh? Never heard of a Christopher. But we saw him walking here. Enough. There ain't no Christopher here, and that's final. I start to flinch as he slams down his paw on the desk and reaches for the gun in his back pocket. Now, what's it gonna be, you twos? The tiger makes his eyes off, takes his eyes off of us momentarily and glares at the door. What is it? I'm busy at the moment. Oh, it's you. Yeah, he's still kind of cute. <laughs> I prefer him without the, uh, without the little, uh, the, the masky, you know? Like, he's, is that a smile? No, it's not like the, a smile smile, but it's all right. He's cute. The door slowly opens, revealing the same snow leopard we've been searching for all this time. Sorry, boss, but the shipment has a... Yes, what? It's him. It's that stupid snow leopard we've been trying to find. What the hell is going on here? What are you two cunts doing here? I'm so lost right now. What is going on? Do you know these two? In passing, these two are the ones that tried to attack me at the power plant. Attack you? You are the one who tried to kill me. The tiger was the was also there when I almost died that night. I want to retort, but my mind is blank. <laughs> They're working for the others. There's no doubt about it. I'm certain they were the ones that tried to take me out that night. I shake my head at the absurdity of what I'm hearing. What? You got this all wrong. We didn't do anything. Eh. Did I say you could raise your voice at me? I stop immediately as a pistol is pointed right at me. You twos talk too much, as it is already. We can't let you twos go. Now can we? You bastards keep showing up like cockroaches. This is the perfect opportunity to get rid of you two! <laughs> I see. It all makes sense now. This must be one of Blackout's headquarters. Am I right? Following that logic, you must be the one in charge and we've been set up. The fuck are you talking about? Get that shitty ass smirk off your face! Fox, you's either stupid or brave talking like this. But I'm curious, so let's see what you've got to say. If it don't make sense though, then it's lights out. What the hell is Javier doing? How can he be so calm at a time like this? We're gonna die. Initially, we were looking for Christopher because he was with the Snow Leopard that night at the speakeasy. But now that he's here... What was he doing that night with Christopher? You think I'd tell you? Fuck off! I'm intrigued. 
let's go along with their game. It's not like they're going to escape. <laughs> what, if, what if we just, like, throw ourselves out the window with the chair we're bound to? Like, <laughs> it'd make for a great story. Fox, he was going to meet up with a client. So what? Then that proves my suspicion. Was your client Magnuson? Therefore, you must be Helix. So what? This, info this information is nothing new to us and proves nothing. It was your group that intercepted the meeting, yes. More of a reason for us to take you out. Javier suddenly uh, shakes his head and laughs. <laughs> We've been set up, Theodore. Remember who you... Uh, Theodore, remember who told us to investigate the speakeasy? My jaw drops and I connect the dots. It... it was Lawrence! Oh god, that fucking snake! He set us up. I never thought... I never had a chance to verify the authenticity of the evidence he presented to us. Uh, this entire week with the boss being out. So what? It doesn't matter who did what. It matters what you two's know, capiche? Wait. We, huh, I, can get Magnus for you. I don't know why you need him, but I can. Wait, Javier can? Is this another bluff? I thought Javier mentioned he couldn't get a hold of him anymore. I don't think, I don't like where this is going. That should remove any doubts of us being spies and working against you. If yous can do that for us, uh, we'll let you twos go. Huh. <laughs> but we play by with my rules. Our men will accompany you to get Magnus. Boss, if this, uh, if what this fox says is true, then you know how big this is for us. Well, maybe. Maybe we don't know to, uh, we don't need to do plan B after all. The tiger shifts casually, locking eyes with me as I sigh in relief when he finally lowers his gun. In the meantime, we can be comfortable here. If Fox does any funny, anything funny, then we'll, uh, then you'll be collateral. Javier, are you sure about this? I don't think this is a good idea. You have to trust me. There's a sudden pit in my stomach when I realize I don't have a choice. Okay, please get Magnus. I don't want to die. Men, take the fox out of the van. The lions suddenly come barging back in and forcibly escort Javier out of the room. Yeah, don't touch me. Hey, wait, my stuff. I need my stuff back to contact Magnus. Javier's voice slowly fades as he's forced out, leaving me alone to fend for myself. Helix, watch over the boy. I'll be busy. Be gentle with him. He's a tiger like me. If they're, uh, if they're innocent, it will be, a, it would hurt me to know I did wrong to my kind. Yes, boss. I can see Helix from the corner of my eye, his face filled with rage. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll end the part here, everyone, so I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you guys around. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Rain Check. Uh, does anyone, does anyone know what Yakult is? Uh, it, it's like a little yogurt drink that I've been having since I was like a child. I got one right in front of me. like a little shot of yogurt. Always like these shits. It's nice. Da, 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 da. Let me know if you also grew up with it, or at least know what it is, or drink it yourself. Let me know. What's Theo doing? He's captured and bound to a chair. We found out that Helix was the snow leopard all along. And Javier's gonna go do a transaction in order to get us free, because we are trapped with Leopard. I'm sure that makes sense if you, uh, 
You can parse all of that if you watched last episode. If you somehow started with this one, uh, go man, uh, sorry. Uh, but we'll, we'll see how well Theo does this day, yes. I can see Helix from the corner of my eye, his face filled with rage. You. Where's the damn wolf? He. I try to speak, but my mind is drawing blanks, failing to process everything that's been happening. Tears start to fall as I break from the pressure and ultimately think back to that night. He's in the hospital. Hospital? He protected me from the shots. What? Liar! It's true. I thought he was going I thought he wasn't gonna make it. But he's alive, although. Stop fucking lying, you piece of shit! Why would he sustain any injuries? You are the ones being target. Uh, you are the ones targeting me. I desperately shake my head, trying to hold myself together. We were, we weren't. Please, you, you have to believe me. We didn't know what was going on. Stop crying. It's pathetic. Uh, okay. Answer me this. First the power plant, then the bar. Why are the three of you following me? I don't know. I, it, it just happened that way. We, 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 Lawrence, he told us to go there. Lawrence? Who the fuck is Lawrence? Listen, buddy. You better not fuck around with me. I almost died that night, and I've had it to hear with seeing your shitty face. His face isn't shitty, it's cute. I cower in fear as something cold presses against the back of my head. It's it's true. I'll tell you what happened. Just just don't hurt me. Then talk. L Lawrence works at Arc 2. He told Roe and Javier to go to the speakeasy to investigate Blackout. I don't work at, at Arc. I've uh, just just been tagging along because of the cryptic text messages I got that wanted me to go to the power plant. When, when we got to the speakeasy, Lawrence was acting suspicious, like he was off doing his own thing. That's when Magnus came up to us and asked for Javier's help with an important meeting. Why? I don't know, but Magnus said he was waiting for a long time. They both left together and not long then... And not long then, Ro and I saw you and Christopher enter. I sigh in relief as I feel pressure on my head disappear. The room is silent. The only sound is the frantic pounding of my heart. If what you say is true, then... Let me ask you one last thing. Why should we trust you? Javier, he's gonna get Magnus. He's putting me on the line. Isn't that enough? I can feel the uh, binds behind my arms unfasten. Huh? huh? Don't move, or I'll bleed you dry. There's too many inconsistencies with my theories. Yours makes more sense if I'm giving you, given to believe you. So you'll you'll let me go? You'll come with me if you want to live. I'll give you one chance. Follow me. Oh, oh, ah, ah, no, no. Well, time to edit this onto the <laughs> other episode I recorded. <laughs> That's how we'll do that, okay? That's how we'll do that. We'll just staple it on. It'll, it's fine, okay? It's fine. It's all good. I don't know what's gonna happen. We are we getting a new companion? Are we gonna be around with uh, with Helix next time? We have all these new companions. I've seen every few episodes. We're just like, get in here, Theo. You're with me now. <laughs> oh, I assume we're gonna go meet that gator. Or that croc. In the preview image. When you go download the newest build. There's like a guy there. It's exciting. I can't wait. So I'll... Uh... <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, I think we'll... I think we'll just end it at this build was great. I'm having an amazing time. This is still, still good. Still amazing. But yeah, we'll be wrapping it up here, guys. So I hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you guys around.